Uh, welcome for our lesson. Uh, today I want to start uh, covering the second part of agents of food poisoning. Uh, last time I said there are two main agents of food poisoning uh, where I said one are microorganisms and microorganisms and number two chemicals. Okay, uh, last uh, time I described on how uh, microorganisms uh, cause food poisoning and we talked of three main microorganisms uh, which were bacteria, viruses and fungi uh, which are the main uh, microorganisms that can cause food poisoning. Uh, we also talked about the vectors, those that are carrying the microorganisms from where they are to the food, we called them vectors. Now, uh, today I want to study the second part, which is now chemicals. How can chemicals uh, uh, cause food poisoning? Uh, and which are some of the, these chemicals? Uh, we say chemicals are the second agent of food poisoning, as last time we talked about microorganisms. Uh, now, example of such a chemicals that are used at home, in our daily work, at home we find that we deal with chemicals uh, to control one or two, three things. And in the course of dealing with the such chemicals, you find that uh, the chemicals can get uh, to food and the food, uh, after being consumed, uh, you find that the food has been poisoned. Now, examples of such chemicals are pesticides, uh, pesticides, uh, when they are mishandled, can cause food poisoning. Uh, number two, we have insecticides, are uh, also some of the uh, chemicals that control insects at home. And when they come in contact with the food, you find that the food is poisoned. Uh, number three, we have herbicides. Herbicides, uh, which are used to control weeds in our farms, are also other dangerous chemicals. We have our normal soap uh, that we use to wash clothes and also uh, cleaning utensils at home is also another dangerous chemical. And then we have detergents that are also used for cleaning, uh, very dangerous. Uh, caricides uh, that are used to spray animals uh, are very dangerous chemicals when mishandled. We have paints and kerosene. These are some of the chemicals used at home and you find that when they come in contact with food, the food becomes uh, is poisoned. Uh, we also say there are also other natural uh, chemicals uh, that are also very dangerous. You find that some food have natural chemicals like if maize is stored in a damp place or if it is not properly dried you find that uh, it, it uh, contains a chemical known as aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is a chemical that is found uh, on maize that is stored in a damp place or which is stored and was not uh, properly dried. So this one is a natural chemical that is just found in uh, grains. Uh, we also have uh, certain parts of the cassava. When cassava, cassava is having some of the parts that are poisonous. So this is also another natural form of poison. Uh, we also have sprouting parts of potatoes and uh, are, it's very poisonous. You find that when you want to cook a potato, you, fa you remove all the parts which have sprouted to make sure that uh, that potato uh, is safe for consumption. Uh, we also have preserved foods, uh, preserved foods which have been uh, applied with pesticides should be thoroughly washed before they are cooked. You find that if they are not thoroughly washed, those pesticides that were used to preserve that food uh, is poisonous. When consumed by people, you find that you have stomach problem. Okay, next we come to symptoms of food poisoning. 
How can you know that this person has consumed poison, poisoned food? Signs and symptoms of food poisoning. Signs and symptoms of food poisoning. Now, signs and symptoms of food poisoning. Now, how can you know that this person has been has consumed food that has been poisoned? Eh? These are some of the signs that will prove to you that this person has consumed food that has been poisoned. One, violent vomiting. Violent vomiting is one of the sign and symptom of food poisoning. Number two, severe headache. Number two, we have severe headache. Number three, we have diarrhea. Diarrhea is another sign of food poisoning. Uh, we also have a lot of fever. Fever is also another sign of food poisoning. We have uh, feeling weak and feeling weak and dizzy. Feeling weak and dizzy. Uh, number six, we have Abdominal pain, severe abdominal pain because the stomach has been affected. Now you will have uh, severe abdominal pain, and then we have feeling nausea, feeling nausea, and then we have muscle paralysis. Muscle, para, muscle paralysis, and then lastly, constipation. Number nine, constipation is also another sign of food poisoning. Now, I will explain. And some of the signs of food poisoning are here. Number one, we have said when you consume food that has been poisoned, we, the first sign is violent vomiting. Now the system, the gut has been affected. Now you will find that the person is uh, having a lot of vomiting. Number two, we have severe headache. This is another sign of food poisoning. You will find that that person is having a severe headache is complaining of the headache is another sign of food poisoning. We have Violent diarrhea. This person you will find that is staying next to the toilet. Now, number four, we have fever due to rise in temperature. You will find the person complaining of fever. Now, number five, the person obviously will be weak and dizzy. Now, number six, abdominal pain or stomachache because the stomach has been affected the person will complain uh, abdominal pain or a lot of uh, stomachache. Number seven, uh, the person will also feel nausea. Now, what is the meaning of this word nausea? Means that the person will feel like vomiting, uh, as if you, are, you want to vomit, but uh, nothing is coming out. That, uh, that is nausea. And then we have muscle paralysis. Some parts of the muscle will not function properly when the person have been consu have consumed uh, the poison. And then lastly, we talk of constipation. I described the, I explained the meaning of constipation last lesson, where I said that uh, when you don't use a lot of roughage or fiber, you find that you don't uh, empty your power. So it is another sign of food poisoning. These are now 
the signs and the symptoms of somebody who have used uh, poison or as you consumed poisoned food. Now next, uh, let me talk about methods of preventing food poisoning. How can you prevent food poisoning? There are ways, methods of preventing food poisoning is the next subtopic. Methods of preventing food poisoning. There are methods of preventing food poisoning. One, proper storage of food to avoid contamination. Number one, proper of food to avoid contamination. Number one, proper storage of food to avoid contamination. Number two, proper preservation of food, proper preservation of food. There are methods of preserving food. Next we have proper sanitation and disposal of cabbage. Proper sanitation and disposal of cabbage. Another way of preventing food poisoning, hygienic handling of food, hygienic handling of food, hygienic handling of food, proper cooking of food, proper cooking, proper cooking, you should cook food properly. We have thorough washing of hands before handling food. Thorough washing of hands before, before handling food. Before you handle food, make sure that the hands have been thoroughly washed. And then thorough cleaning of food which is eaten raw. Thorough cleaning of food which is eaten there are washing of food which is eaten raw and then avoid eating expired food avoid eating expired there are so many ways uh, let me explain this as we continue now these are some of the ways that you can prevent food poisoning. Number one, I said proper storage of food to avoid contamination. If you have food, where do you store food to make sure that it's not poisoned? How do you store food? You make sure that the place where you are storing food is clean and is safe uh, to mean microorganisms and chemicals cannot reach that place. Number two, proper preservation of food. We talked of methods of preserving food. We have traditional methods and also modern methods. So when you are preserving food to be used in future time, make sure that you are handling that method uh, and that food of which you are preserving uh, properly. You find that some of the preservation methods, uh, maybe you might use chemicals or some of the traditional methods are not safe for, uh, for proper uh, preservation of food. So make sure that that method you are using uh, is safe. And number three, we say proper sanitation and disposal of cabbage. You find that 
sanitation is proper cleanness. Make sure that the place or the kitchen where you are preparing the food is clean enough. And also, after you have uh, kitchen refuge, make sure that you are disposing that garbage at the right place and you are disposing it correctly. And then we have hygienic handling of food. Uh, hygienic handling of food, uh, make sure that whoever is handling the food is first of all is clean and has cleaned the hands before handling food. And number next, proper cooking of food. Uh, you find that make sure that food has been cooked for enough time before you serve that food to make sure that the microorganisms or some of the chemicals that might be there has been fully destroyed. Uh, next we say there are washing of hands before handling food. Uh, you find that whoever is handling food uh, make sure that the hands have been thoroughly cleaned before you handle that food because some of the microorganisms might, be, might have caught in contact of your hand or some of the chemicals uh, might be on your hand. So before you handle food, make sure that you have cleaned uh, hands properly. And next we say there are cleaning of food which is eaten raw. Some of the foods like fruits, you find that they are eaten raw. So make sure that you clean them thoroughly before you consume them because it, they might have come in contact with some chemicals and also microorganisms. So make sure that those fruits or carrots or potatoes that are eaten raw or sugar again, clean them thoroughly before you eat them. Now, next we say avoid eating expired food. Some of the foods uh, that have been preserved have expi expired dates. So make sure that you confirm the expi expired date before you start consuming it because uh, it might have, uh, it might state that uh, expiry date is last year and you are consuming this year you find that now it has been poisoned so make sure uh, you confirm the expiry date before you consume it there are some of the methods of preventing food poisoning uh, we still continue I proceed another one avoid buying damaged fruits Avoid buying, avoid buying damaged fruits. Avoid buying damaged fruits. Keep food at the right condition. Keep food at at the right condition keep food at the right condition uh, buy food stuffs from clean dealers buy food stuffs from clean dealers Buy foodstuffs from clean dealers, uh, regular and proper disinfection of slaughterhouses and bujaris, regular, regular and proper, proper disinfection of slaughterhouses and bujaris and bujaris proper disinfection of slaughterhouses and bujaris uh, ensure food dealers are healthy ensure food dealers are healthy they should be healthy they should not uh, be infected with diseases uh, proper air circulation in cupboards proper air circulation 
in cupboards. Proper circulation in cupboards, and then we have proper washing of utensils and dishes. Proper washing of utensils and dishes. Okay, now these are the methods of preventing food poisoning. Uh, I proceed. We say avoid buying damaged fruits. You find that you go to the market, some of the mango, some of the apples, some of the avocado and bananas have been damaged, some of the parts, and then you buy them. You are just poisoning yourself. Make sure that those fruits you buy, they have not been damaged. Number two, we say keep food at the right condition. Uh, when food is dry, and also where you are keeping food must be clean and air uh, should have free air circulation. And then we have buy food stuff from clean dealers. You go to the market and find that whoever is selling food is dirty, himself or herself. And then avoid buying food from a such a person. Make sure that the person who is selling food, first of all, is clean. Uh, number next, we say regular and proper disinfection of slaughterhouses and bujaris. This is uh, places where slaughterhouses, where animals are slaughtered for beef or pork or mutton. Uh, the animals that are slaughtered. So that place, uh, if not disinfected, you find that m we will have microorganisms staying there, bacteria and viruses. So the such places, butcheries and slaughterhouses must be disinfected regularly to make sure that uh, we don't have dangerous microorganisms uh, that can uh, cause food, uh, that meat to have poison. Uh, next we say ensure food dealers are healthy. Themselves should not have contaminated, uh, should, should be healthy. They, ha they should have uh, uh, letters from the health centers to make sure that they have not contracted diseases like HIV AIDS, uh, corona, uh, corona or COVID-19 and other diseases. So they must be held first before they start selling food to people. And then we have proper air circulation in cupboards. I have already discussed about that. And then lastly, we have proper washing of utensils and dishes. This is self-explanatory. The plate and the cup you are using itself must be clean first before you serve food on it. Now, uh, to that point, uh, uh, that is the end of our topic, foods and nutrition. Uh, we have covered all the parts, all the subtopic under food and nutrition in standard eight. So expect questions at the bottom of this video. Thank you.